Hello, let us do a Poison Elemental Pharaoh's Critical Sata build. This one is not converted to physical and left as Poison Element. Right now there are so many changes in the game. So if there, if there is some kind of update that changes this build, I'm gonna write down it in the description. So keep an eye on the, on the description. So let's get into it. Skill board early should look something like this. I'm keeping Shadow Watcher because Shadow Watcher is the most important one right there. You you need to have it. Otherwise, this skill is not as good. Then you want multi shot, additional poison damage, quick attack, confidence. You can do find weakness if you lack a little bit of critical rate, or you can do slaughter for more critical damage. On attack and hands, you want vital strike with enhance effect, time acceleration, and increased duration. For defense and hands, you want siphon life with increased duration and time acceleration. Shadow Provocation to give you damage multi and arm amplification with Lingering Shout, Predator's Roar, Hushet Shout, Enhance Effect and Time Acceleration and with buff activation and hit. So you wouldn't need to press it yourself. For Offensive Seal I suggest to use Condensed Elements or you can pick up Seal of Critical Chance but then you don't need to use Find Weakness, you can definitely use Slaughter if you have, if you are using Seal of Critical Chance. Shadow of Justice just to remove your CC together with buff activation upon crowd control. For movement abilities, I'm using Sprint, but you can use Roll if you want to, together with Trick Shots, both linked with Disarm. I'm also using Illusion Arrow to extract some converted to Fire damage and extract energy to extract Fire energies for some extra damage. Not a bad idea. And they add a dampen resource cost, but you don't have to. You should be able to maintain your mana. Wheel of Protection I'm always keeping in any build, just because of projectile damage taken decrease. Because there is no other way to actually decrease the projectile damage, and you get plenty of projectile damage in game. So Wheel of Protection is basically on any build, it's a really good one. Itemization, so... Basically for the bow, you're looking for something like this. Gear critical rate, always. This is the main one that you want to get. Then critical damage, weapon da damage, attack multiplier, weapon damage flat, then poison damage flat, and weapon speed. Of course, it, you're not gonna get item like this. It's really hard to get a perfect one, but this is what you aim for. And always recraft your bow. As, as soon as you get a higher tier one with better base, always look for that. And of course, you're looking for critical base bows of 11 because this is the highest critical base you can get on the bow for the critical um i want to mention this unique ring basically castle refraction it's really good one you don't have to get that transcendent one because this one gives you a flat 14 critical rate up to 15 depending on what roll you get and this basically doubles my critical rate this is really really nice ring and it's really worth to use this one. You, it's really hard. It's gonna be really hard to craft another ring that be better than this one. On gear, you want to go for your main defense. In my case, it's barrier. If you are doing armor, you want to get gear armor multiplier, and then you want to get a little bit of HP. On suffix part, whatever you can get. For example, on the shoulders, I went for gear armor and gear armor again because. I don't need HP, but remember, if you are HP build, get HP also on your prefix. On suffix part, whatever you can get. Any resistances, you can get some hit rate, whatever works for you. On the boots, the only difference is that you want to get the movement speed increase. This would be the most important one. After that, you can get some area damage if you manage to roll that, or elemental damage if you manage to roll that. On the suffix part, whatever you can get. These are authority ones, so they are a little bit different. But you don't have to aim for authority that early. It's gonna be tough. On a quiver is simple. I went for poison damage flat. I went for attack critical rate, critical damage on the suffix parts, and then whatever I could get on the third suffix, some HPs, even though I don't need it, but I just rolled it. And I rerolled my hit rate on the bench to critical damage because I have so much hit rate it I don't need that many. For necklace, you're looking for critical damage implicit neck. On this one, I have physical damage because it was physical build, but 
On this build, you want poison damage flat and poison damage multi. And on the suffix part, whatever you can get, whatever you need the most. For the rings, you're looking for attack critical rate implicit rings, like this one. On the suffix part, you of course want critical rate, then critical damage. And on prefix part, you want a you want area damage or elemental damage, and also attack speed if you can get it. Zodiac. So we start with Afros, then into Swamp for stakeout. Strong willed person on Wanderer. Three points for excellent senses. Then into Transcendent Attack on Leaf. Stem for elemental damage into Path of Element with Twisted Elements. This one is important because it gives you status effect rate. Next one is Elaborate Attack for flat critical chance and critical damage. Flash for Muscle Strength Explosion, pick up mana on every attack hit and HP on every attack hit. You don't have to pick up Barrier if you're not doing Barrier, but these two are really good. Then into Sand Sculpture for Projectile Count and into, into the Certification for Area Effect, because we want to stack as much Area Effect as we can without losing too much damage. Then Intense Hit for Damage Jump, Hit of Endurance for Damage Jump again. Sensational Perfume for Damage Jump again on two-hander weapons. Then into Certainty for area effect. Melee damage dampening doesn't affect us because we are not melee skill. So it's basically free area effect. If you are doing hardcore, I would suggest to pick up uh, Strong Will. Actually this way, I absolutely forgot about this node. Yeah. Then, let's talk about some optional stuff. Breath is not optional, by the way. In Annihilation, you want that. It's area damage jump and area effect. But this one is kind of optional. The extra lightning damage. It's basically to apply shock with this build. It works really well. You pick up a little bit of shock rate in here. And shock increases your damage. The shock debuff, so it works real well, and it's combined with the twisted element for status effect rate. So you have a high chance to apply a shock, enough chance. I wouldn't suggest to do that early, but if you want, you can. And let's talk about the spec right now. I'm using brilliance, but you can also do dawn. You can go into powerful hit, acceleration, and follow up. Then into Dimension for Elemental Damage Jump, Area Damage, and you can do Sharpness. My build is Barrier, so I picked up Realization, but you don't have to pick up this one if you're not doing Elemental Build. And you want to go into this one, and you can pick up basically Elemental Damage Jump, and extra additional Lightning Damage. If you don't have the 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 node that I show you, or you can go for cold damage, gonna work also. If you don't want to pick up brilliance, another way is to do dawn. In this one, same idea. You go into overpower, into powerful hit together with uplift, and you can pick up convert mana if you don't have it. If you have convert mana, you can do vigor instead. Then Hail for Tempest, Strike Damage Jump. And if you are late into the game, you can go into Element Observer. It's going to be really nice damage. If you're not so late into the game, you can go into Sharpness and into Desperate Hit. But Element Observer is going to be better later into the game. And for the last one is Sympathy with Area Damage Jump, Strike Damage Jump, and you can pick up HP Absorbent Hit. And... To unlock 9 points in here, you need to do green quest in Saluto, don't forget that. For charms, right now there are two ways to do it. I kind of went the way that was uh, in Season 3. So basically I went for 4x140. 
I picked up Vespa as my main, then into Leo, Alyssa, and Castor. Castor was a little bit nerfed, but this is one way to do it, 4x140. But there is another way right now to do 2x230 plus 140. So if you choose to do the latter one, you can go Leo, Alyssa, into Vespa. So 230 Alyssa, 230 Leo, and 140 Vespa. That's another way. For the charms themselves, you want critical rate, critical damage, and the third, this one, the third affix can be anything you want. It can be damage, it can be HP, it can be elemental resistances, whatever you get. But focus always on critical rate and critical damage. And ma make your way like this. Legendary, the best legendary prefix you can get is this one. Chance to deal maximized damage on a hit. Because it de deals almost at the same time double and triple. It gives the chance to double and triple, so this is the best one. But pick up whatever you can get. Critical damage is also good. Whatever you can benefit from. Strike damage jump is also really good. This charm is really good with maximized damage. Because this charm enables me to do maximized damage. And this charm gives me maximized damage more maximized damage, so it works really well. Relic should look something like this. I would highly suggest to start with Sebda. Pick up Mental Stimulation for active skill, with cooldown recovery speed, and enhanced damage decrease. If you don't care about the damage taken, you can pick up Increased Buff Effect instead. For the passive is Chaos Resist. For the second one, you can go for Castor. For the passive to increase your area effect and area damage. For the third one is Pika, basically for 5% chance to deal double maximized damage on hit, as physical damage not gonna work on this one. And for the last one is of course Boreal for HP, because the last one can only be level 15. Rune Mastery levels, so I would suggest to start with uh, Damage amplification against poison status, poison status effects, cause you're gonna be doing venom from your poison of arrows. And then you can invest into like lightning statuses, if you have picked up additional lightning damage on every hit, and you have a little bit of status effect rate, cause you're gonna be applying uh, lightning status. At the same time, if you get cold status effects, a little bit of cold damage on every attack, you can pick up additional damage, additional damage amp against skull statuses, but remember, start with poison, because that's gonna work for sure. And I think this is the best invest investment early, by the way. You can only do 10 points, but 10 damage amp is more than plenty. Of course, if you need some stats, you can go for stats, it's just on every single build it's different. Just use whatever you need the most. Upgrades on the skill board should look something like this. So on Poison of the Pharaohs, you want to awaken it to Origin to pick up Area Damage Amplification. Then Shadow Archer is the main one. You can awaken it to Verity. Multishot is another one. You always want to keep that one and you want to make it a legendary as soon as possible for extra projectile count. Deadly Poison Claw has to be awakened to Verity, otherwise you won't be able to apply Venom and that's gonna decrease your damage. I'm also using additional poison damage flat, but that's just because I don't have enough flat, but this is a good choice. Awaken it to even more poison flat. Quick attack. Quick attack or confidence. Confidence is a little bit better. And you only want to remove your attack, quick attack or confidence when you reach 5 attack speed or even more than 5. When you reach an attack speed cap, then you can remove quick attack or confidence. And mana storm. Not a bad choice. Then, Seal of Striking, damage amplification is going to be better than condensed elements, especially later into the game. Don't do it too soon, but a little bit later into the game. Marks one with decreased duration, this one is going to increase your damage by a lot, but don't do it too early again. I'm also using Illusion Arrow converted to fire, and extracting energies from that. Also Illusion Axe uh, with extract energy, and in here I have call damage. Call damage is basically for defense, but you can do uh, convert it to lightning for some status effect rate. It's gonna be easier to apply venom, and if you have additional lightning damage on every hit, it's gonna be easier to apply shock. Same goes for cold to apply freeze. 
or physical to apply bleed. That's the idea. That's everything I wanted to say. Thanks for watching. And remember to check the description because probably there's going to be some changes for sure. If you have any questions, you can find me in game or you can just inspect my, my character. You can see the nickname on the gameplay. I'm doing that Poison Lane of Arrows build. Right now, trying to push some DPS with this, playing hardcore. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitch. I'm also streaming. If you need like specific help with your character, just find me on Twitch when I'm live. It's gonna be much easier for me to help you because I can just inspect your character and see what's going on. It's only gonna take a few minutes at most. So yeah, GDs, and see you guys on the next one.